Here's the part two to Exoplanet Article versus Stellar Metamorphosis. Today is August 9th, 2015. About a third of the way down, you can go to Formation and Evolution. It says here, planets form within a few tens of millions of years of their star forming. And there are stars that are forming today and other stars that are 10 billion years old. So unlike the planets of the solar system, which can only be observed as they are today, studying exoplanets allows the observation of exoplanets at different stages of evolution. When planets, ha when planets form, they have hydrogen envelopes that cool and contract over time. Depending on the mass of the planet, some or all of the hydrogen is eventually lost to space. This means that even terrestrial planets can start off with large radii. An example is Kepler 51b, which has only about twice the mass of the Earth, but is almost the size of Saturn, which is 100 times the mass of Earth. Kepler 51b is quite young at a few hundred million years old. Now, I wanted to point this out because they have three main cited things concerning the very first sentence in there, saying, planets form within a few tens of millions of years of their star forming. And one of the cited articles is Initial Conditions of Planet Formation, Lifetimes of Primordial Disks. There they go. The preconditioned, politically correct theory which has been falsified by the Kepler Space Telescope. This was submitted on June 26, 2009, so it's not up to date, it's out of date. Another one of the articles is on the formation time scale and core masses of gas giant planets. And it says here, numerical simulations show that the migration of growing planetary cores may be dominated by turbulent fluctuations in the protoplanetary disk rather than by any mean property of the flow. Here they go again with the same disk stuff. The core of giant core masses of giant gas planets form over time. It's a, it's a stage in evolution, of a star's evolution. No disk is required at all, yet they, they, they dogmatically keep the disk. And of course that article was submitted on October 7, 2003. It's also 12 years out of date. And then you have another article. This is in Nature. This was dated August 29th, 2002. It's also out of date. Determining the chronology for the assembly of planetary bodies in the early solar system is essential for a complete understanding of star and planet formation processes. No, it's not. It, the, the, the assembly of planetary bodies is, is they're in their own paths, their own paths of evolution. They're different stars in different stages of evolution. And their orbits... There's no set assembly time for those orbits. The, the adoption of the objects is random. So the chronology isn't important. <laughs> and I think it's funny how they still keep star and planet as being mutually exclusive concepts. They're not. The star evolution is the planet formation itself. The star is the young planet. And the planet is the ancient star. So... Keeping a lot of reading a lot of these and seeing where they get the basics wrong is quite unreal. It's it's a very weird feeling for me. And then you have uh, let's see here. Oops, looks like it uh, closed down on me. But uh, basically, you get the point. It's like they hop, skip, and jump all over the place with their ideas on, on how planets form and they always seem to keep the disk even though the disk is you know clearly been falsified it is suggested that they update their theories to account for modern interpretations of stellar evolution and planet formation being that they're the same thing but i i highly doubt they're going to want to update it because then it means other things are going to crash down along with it such as the fusion model of stars uh, let's see what else. The importance of chemistry. They have stars as not being chemical related, but actually they are very, very chemical, as well as electrochemical. 
and we can also place the process of fusion where it actually happens inside of birthing galaxies. So a lot's going to have to change uh, as a result of this insight and I will be willing to make as many videos as I can to get it all out there and to point out where establishment science is making all their mistakes. And yes, they are making many thousands of, thousands of mistakes all over the place. And it's about time we uh, point it all out so we can correct ourselves and get science back on track. Alright, later.